Hello, I'm George Takei, but some people call me Uncle George. Many years ago, when I was only five years old, my family and I were taken from our home by the United States government and put on a train that took us to a prison camp far away, along with 120,000 other Japanese Americans, although we had done nothing wrong. Just because we were Japanese Americans and we looked like the soldiers from Japan, who had attacked the United States. Looking back on it as an adult, I can see what a great injustice this was. But at the time, I was just a little kid. For me, my brother, and my baby sister, all we knew was that we were leaving our normal lives behind. My father told us we were going on a long vacation. But for me, it was an adventure. Last year, I teamed up with some friends of mine to make a graphic memoir about this childhood experience. And now, I'd like to read a little bit of it for you. October 7th, 1942. We see a train come roaring down the tracks. A sign is visible that says, Welcome to Arkansas, land of opportunity. Roar! 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 Roar Relocation Center, also known as Camp Roar, was the easternmost of the ten internment sites. On this map, we can see the ten camps. Tule Lake, Minidoka, Heart Mountain, Topaz, Manzanar, Amachi, Poston, Gila River, Jerome, and Roar. We can see that Roar is at the eastern edge of Arkansas, in the swamps where the Arkansas River joins the Mississippi. Look, it's Imai Sang from North Hollywood. Soon we were lined up under the hot and heavy Arkansas sun. Teke, family of five, Takikuma, Teke and family, right here. The guard came over to us. Block six, barrack two, unit F. That's where the driver's going to take you. Listen to Mama, that's where we are going. Are we going to ride in that truck? Yes, we rode past the barbed wire fence and into the camp. Camp Roar had 33 blocks. Each block was designed to house 250 people. At its peak, Roar was home to nearly 8,500 Japanese Americans. You can see that I wasn't too sure about this place. Daddy? This is Block 6. Your housing is located in one of the following. I'm going to find our barrack. You boys do as Mama says. Kaka! You know what that sound is? No, what is it? It's a dinosaur out there. A dino what? A dinosaur, dummy. Don't you know about dinosaurs? They're great big monsters that lived millions of years ago. And then they died. They died? Then how come we hear them out there? Uh, well, the only place they didn't die is right here in Arkansas. That's why they put this fence up. To keep them caged in. Okay, I found 6-2-F. That looks heavy, Mrs. Takei. She never let anyone carry that bag for her. Not Daddy and not this young man lending a helping hand. It's so hot! 
Finally, we reached our barrack. Here we are. I'll never forget the heat that poured out of that cabin when Daddy opened the door. It steamed like a furnace. Uh, thanks for your help, friends. It's too hot inside. Wait here while I open the windows. Clack. <laughs> Let fresh air get in there for a while, and then we'll go in. Even after waiting, when we finally went inside, the air was still heavy and boiling. Don't touch it. It might still be hot. What we sleep on? They're distributing army cots at the other end of the block. I'll get some people to help me carry them here. Suddenly, we heard voices through the wall. Wow, it's hot in here. Thanks for your help. Any time, don't mention it. We hear right through walls. We not have privacy. Shikataganai. And a footnote explains that shikataganai means it can't be helped. I guess that's the way it's going to be. So they began unloading the bags into our new home. What do you think that is? She saved the biggest treat for last. Then Mama proudly revealed the secret that had been hidden inside her heavy bag. Her sewing machine. You brought that? I not want to leave it behind. And children going to be needing new clothes. Daddy stared at her for a long time. You knew this was forbidden. I know. But children be needing new clothes. At first, Daddy was baffled. But then, he smiled. <laughs> and you knew this was forbidden. <laughs> I didn't really understand what was so funny, but I do remember that to us kids, that sewing machine was one big, heavy, crushing disappointment. Setting up our new life in Roar immediately became priority number one. We see Mama working with her sewing machine. Mama began the impossible work of making a home for us out of a rough-hewn single room. She ran up curtains made from government surplus fabrics. Using strips of discarded rags, she braided together colorful floor mats. We see Mama washing our clothes and playing with the three of us kids. About the only thing Mama didn't have to do was cook. But to her, it was no relief. The kitchen was just one more aspect of caring for her family that she was denied. One more loss. I realize now that besides comforting us, perhaps everything she did was also her own statement of defiance. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope that you'll read the rest of the story for yourself and talk about it with your family and friends. It's so important that we understand what happened in the past so that we can stand up to injustice today and work together for a future where everyone is treated fairly with liberty and justice for all. <laughs>